My name is Rockwell Knuckles. And this is What Year Is It? Ooh. What Year Is It? is a podcast about um, a few different things. It's going to be about film. It's going to be about television. It's going to be about music sometimes. It's going to be about culture. It's going to be about... Um, Whatever the fuck I want it to be about, I guess, because it's me, Rockwell Knuckles. Um, yeah, if we're not acquainted and you don't know me, then um, sit back, we'll have a good time, we'll hang out, and we'll figure out which way is up. So, um, what year is it? We're going to go in different years and check out different things and find out what's interesting, you know? And today, the year is 1990. August 22nd of 1990 to be exact, we are going to be reviewing and going through a movie called Pump Up the Volume, starring Christian Slater. You gonna tell me your mother don't recognize you when you're talking? It could be a room full of people. Your mother, your mother's gonna be like, looking all over the place, you know what I mean? Anyway, so they turn on the radio and they're like, that's fucking Mark. They go down the steps to the basement, where, you know, in his little universe, and he's in the middle of doing the show. They knock on the door, Mark, Mark. Mark? And he's like, oh shit! Doof. Damn it. Doof. Immediately, Mark, the fucking, just you know, his audience is like, what the fuck? All the high school kids in the community, like, what the fuck, bro? Uh, yeah, just, just give me a second. He's and he's showing you how he fucking breaks down his, you know, what I'm saying trap. He Two motherfucking seconds. puts clothes all over his Mark, control board. He puts a fucking poster in front of his goddamn. Uh, you know, doohickeys yes, and modulators. Yes. I'm not a very good technical speaker. But uh, he's he covering up all of his fucking, you know, what's it and do doodads. And then he's like, hold on, hang on. One more second. Hang on. Mark, what's going on, son? Mark, Mark, open the door. Mark, open the door, your dad. Hang on. One second. One second. Hang on. Hang on. One second. Next thing you know. He opens the door and they're like, "What? It took. We've been out there five minutes. Why the hell? The hell's taking you so long?" What the hell are you doing He's like, here? "Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I was just sitting in here reading. reading." They said, "Cut it out, Mark. We oh, heard you." He said, "Oh, yeah. I was reading aloud." The fuck out of here with that book. That's a little boy lying to his parents. You understand? It was beautiful the way that they pieced it together. It's a fucking. <laughs> he's such a fucking grown man of, you know, super next level existential brilliant dude on his radio show. His mom and dad walked in. He's a little ass boy. We heard you. You can't li you lie to me, motherfucker. You can't lie to me. Oh, it's fucking gorgeous, man. So anyway, um, the dad's like, don't BS us, Mark. We heard you on the radio. He was like, what the hell? Well, what were you doing down here if you're not on the radio? What are you doing? Out of nowhere, the love interest, Nora, pops up with her sweater, you know, disheveled off her shoulder and shit. She was like, he was talking to me. He was talking to me. She pops up looking like they just finished making out or some shit. They hadn't. Hi, um, I'm Nora. But she was like, this is a quality Nora. distraction. His parents ain't going to think that he was down here being the evil radio monster if he's down here trying to sneak a girl in the, in the house. The parents see Nora... And their faces, their face of relief is not to be believed. They're like, holy shit, he got a girl down here. Oh, my God, thank you, God. Oh, 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 oh. he's connected to another soul. He actually has found a friend of some sort, a friend that wants to touch him. Oh, my God, thank you, God. The parents are so happy because this boy has been alone the entire time they've been in Paradise Falls, Arizona. He's literally been by himself every night all alone crazy people shit not to call people crazy because that's not what i meant that was not how i meant to say it i'm just saying like that's how his parents are seeing it they're like this is not sane this is not normal this is also 1990 where uh mental health was not appreciated or, uh, or cared for the way it is today <sighs> So they're just thinking immediately that he's fucking cuckoo. You know what I mean? So him actually having another human being that he's interacting with, even if he's fooling around trying to get some action, 
they're happy as fuck. They're like, oh my God, you, you have no idea how happy we are to meet you. Oh my God, this is awesome. She was like, oh, well, you know, I'm sorry I interrupted Mark's studies. I'll just, I'll get out of here. They're like, oh no, please, please don't go. Please hang out with him, please. She's like, Mark, I'll see you at school tomorrow. The parents and the dad's like, look at you, look at you being out here, you know. I thought, you know, for a minute, your mom and I thought you were that crazy radio DJ guy. And then, you know, fucking Mark goes, well, you know, Dad, he's maybe not that crazy. The dad goes, huh, yeah, ha, ha, very funny. Now go get her. Like the parents are encouraging a teenage son to make out with this hot girl in his uh, basement bedroom. I'm like, this is a recipe for disaster, Mom and Dad. Why are you encouraging? I understand psychologically why you're encouraging this, but I'm like, this might be a lose-lose, you know? Anyway. So they leave, they slowly walk upstairs. As they're slowly walking upstairs, he turns everything back on. Sorry, everybody, technical difficulties. Whole crowd of kids in the field I was talking to you about where they all meet up like the drive-in, whole crowd of kids go, yeah, it's fucking awesome, dude. Like they, they have found something to connect to and believe in, in, heart, in, in Harry, you know? So he gets back to talking his shit, and he's playing songs, and he's feeling good and shit. He puts on a good radio show for him that night. And uh, that night, he went, all the, the parents are listening now. All the teachers are listening. Everybody in town is listening to this shit. And he opens up a letter that he got, and it's from a teenage boy who lives an alternative lifestyle, goes to his school, who was taken advantage of in a negative way. He got lined up, thought he was meeting up with a guy to, you know, hang out or whatever, and he got lined up by the guy and his friends and taken advantage of or whatnot. And Harry is on the on the microphone, I mean on the phone with the guy, and the, you know, the, the the call is on the show. And he's got the guy describing the call. He's like, do you want to tell everybody what's going on or whatnot? He's like, I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid. And the guy tells a story. And Harry's slowly going with him. He's just letting him talk, really, you know. And while the, and this kid starts to get, it's like a 16-year-old kid, you know what I mean? And this is like on an FM station. On a, It's a pirated station, but it's an FM station. This is like, you know. Not your shit. These are government airwaves type shit. You know what I mean? These aren't fuck off airwaves. These are government airwaves type shit. And the kid starts to get descriptive and he starts to talk about, you know, details of different situations that happen in this scenario. And it's getting a little raunchy on a certain level, but it's a raw story that he's telling about his life. So the guidance counselor at school literally calls the police. Like... He's like, the guy's counselor said, he is just using these kids. And I'm sitting there like, you don't recognize that he's a kid himself because of the fucking voice modulator. You know what I'm saying? These are, his, these are his classmates. He says he's a student at the school. You know what I'm saying? So he's telling a story. And while he's telling this story about this tragedy that happened to him, all you're thinking about is the kid Malcolm who committed suicide the, what, two days before. So you're like, are you going to have another bad call? With an inter with with someone, and and lead them in the wrong direction on accident, but he completely handled the Mark uh, Harry completely handled this call with grace and ease and poise, and told the guy, "You're not confused. I think you know exactly what's going on." And every, and the, those other assholes are, are the ones that are fucking confused and shit. You know, it was a, it was a great way he ended the call, but that that you know then it. The, he uh, he was signed off. He played some sexy song. Why can't I fall in love? You know, he played some more sexy shit, and then uh, he's walking around smoking a cigarette. You know, and uh, the the girl Nora is just in his backyard. She told the parents that she had to leave, but she's just hanging out in his backyard with a fuck with headphones on, listening to it on the, on a Walkman. A Walkman is a thing that people used to use to listen to music. You used you would have to use a cassette tape to hear music in a Walkman. And sometimes they were set up to where you could listen to the radio also on them. That's for my audience members that don't know what the fuck a Walkman is. Sorry about that. Anyway. Um, 
Where, 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 where did I stop? Oh, yeah. Why can't I fucking live? Okay, so he's over there fucking smoking his cigarette and walking around her bare chest and shit. And she fucking, and it gets all, you know, intimate for, you know, but I'm like, this is a. It's okay, you don't have to talk. Okay. And so we go past that. And um, what happens? The next day, because of the call that he had with the young boy giving the detailed description of his being assaulted, the fucking FCC comes into town. The fucking feds are in town now. They've raided his motherfucking P.O. box. Literally, parents are in there, we want to know who, who owns this box, whose name is on this box. The news is there. We want to know whose name is on this box. And they're like, I can't let you know that. A fed comes in. He shows his ID, said, you could tell me, though. And the guy's, oh, yes, sir, I can definitely tell you, sir. Well, let me just open this up, and, you know, it's just right here. And, and he opens it up, and he goes, yeah, the P.O. box belongs to a Charles Ulysses Farley. And the fed sits there for a second and goes, ha! Wait, Charles, you far, ha, Chuck, you Farley. Ha, 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 ha. I was like, this goddamn Mark thinks of everything. This goddamn Mark. I'm like, why is this 15, 16-year-old kid a goddamn super fucking espionage spy agent? Like, why is he goddamn Tom Cruise from Mission Impossible? He got his goddamn P.O. box under a fake name. He got his phone connected to the neighbor shit like a, a, a block away. So if they do try to trace his shit that they can't, they can't trace his phone to his parents' house. He set up this whole fucking ham radio into a whole function radio station to where it can take up a, a, a 92.3 on an FM uh, fucking radio station. Like, this this kid is interesting. And all he's talking about is, like, expanding your mind and, like, what is beyond high school because high school is, you know, some people make high school the prime of their lives. And that's why I thought this movie was so interesting because as you become older and get older in life, you hear some people talk and like high school is like their like peak. You know what I'm saying? That's like their shit. That's their mountain. You know what I'm saying? They were a man in high school, you know? And that's like the, the brunt of their conversation. And I always remember, remember when is the lowest form of conversation. That's why I'm not going to say this is the highest form of podcast because there's going to be a lot of remember when on this podcast. But um, I just think that that's so deep. Like, this kid is like, all of y'all don't get so impressed by what we do here right now because this is just the start of this shit. And this young kid just constantly breaking that down and thinking of fucking his, the, the financial freedom of being a teenager, him taking that and putting it in the scope of being in a prison as many young people do. And they feel like once they have financial responsibilities, that's when they're truly free. And listening to a supposed kid break this shit down to his entire motherfucking high school, uh, high school community, 1,200 kids in his fucking school. I think that shit is fucking, I think that's crazy. I think it's crazy indeed. This is deep. But anyway, Your message is out there. The truth uh, is The next nice. day, you know, feds go raid his P.O. box. He goes to school. He meets up with Nora, you know, because they were all, you know, making out and snuggling and shit and snogging and shit. So, you know, he's, he still can't talk. You know what I'm saying? He's still fucking, you know what I mean? But uh, she's, you know, smoochy booching him and shit, you know what I mean? They're like a couple and stuff, which is dope. Cool for Nora, cool for Mark. Uh, probably good content for Harry, you know. Um, you know, they're looking around and out of nowhere. Nora, last night was a mistake. I'm, I'm not going on anymore. That's it. It's over. That's it's it. so close. Close to what? To getting your message out. All shit goes nuts at school that day. Everything goes nuts. Um, the principal's, you know, bulldog. Every boss has a bulldog. You know what I'm saying? Fucking bulldog general. 
Oh, excuse me, uh, young lady, would you come He along? comes through Donald, and come along. he's just Darryl. snagging students, come snatching along. students. He uh, grabs Nora, Mark's love interest. He grabs her and her come best on. friend. Her best friend's fucking awesome in this movie. Uh, they grab all of them, grab some more kids, and they take them all into the office with the principal. Principal expels them all. I can do whatever I like. It's my school commission. Because... She said, you're going to tell me about your DJ friend. So we have a look at these Or we're going to talk about these records. Or should and because they gave them the nothing, they expelled DJ. all these kids. It's a big cluster of kids. They're just expelling kids like crazy at this school. Unfair. You can't just fucking expel a kid for no fucking reason. So in the middle of this, a kid that got expelled unfairly comes on, on campus Yo, and is putting up a sign yeah, saying, I have a right to an education. You're not the same proctor hey, hey, that grabbed all the kids to take to the, to the principal. He tries to stop the kid. The kid's like, dude, I can do that. Proctor fucking molly wops his kid square in his fucking face. And then uppercuts him in the fucking stomach. A teacher runs up and goes, what the hell are you doing? He was beating a student. The principal's like, man, you better come. I will not. I want answers. I want an answer. This teacher is furious. And the principal was like, yeah, uh, you're fired. I'm talking about your decision. principal just fired this bitch. I'm this lady. I was just like, God damn. You just fucking, you just let her go? Because she's pissed that one of your employees punched a child? You fucking asshole. You're such a see you next Tuesday. Ah. Uh, that means anyway um yeah so all of that's going on at the school that day you know mark's like i am done doing happy heart on harry it is too much going on and i mean like the walls are flooded you know it's a school with 1200 kids so they got a fucking quad and shit like it's college you know it's covered in spray paint and posters talk hard so be it you know Cock ring, all sorts of random shit that you know he'd be talking about in this fucking show. I'm talking about it because I thought that shit was like a podcast. He's just in there running his mouth, playing shit, doing his fucking thing. It's just fucking awesome, you know? So anyway, um, all right, he's like, you know, he told Nora to fuck off. I'm done. I'm not doing this shit no more. They split up. They split up for the day. She got snagged, uh, snatched, put to see the principal. She got expelled. He walk, He goes to find her to apologize for earlier. Apologize. She's like, man, whatever the fuck, dude, whatever. Forget you it. see that shit? And he looks over, it's FCC trucks. Trucks that just say FCC. I'm like, God damn. Mother, he goes, yeah, those, yeah, those are FCC trucks. That means that they can drive around and figure out where a radio signal is coming from, from anywhere. She's like, yeah, so it's over, right? So fuck it. I don't give a shit no more. He's like, what's wrong with you? She's like, I got expelled. He's like, what? She's like, yeah, lady fucking expelled me. Blah, blah, blah. I told him a story. He goes, this school sucks. School sucks. And this is a kid who doesn't speak. He doesn't really speak. Uh, like him walking up to her going, I've been looking for you all day. I just wanted to say I'm, I'm sorry. That was a lot for him. He don't fucking talk for real. Like, he don't fucking talk. He walked up and apologized. I was like, look at you taking strides and shit, you know? But uh, anyway, she goes, yeah, you know, blah, 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 this school sucks. She runs off. While she's running off, the teacher that just got fired goes, Mark, hey, Hunter, because his last name is Hunter, just like my son's first name. And my mother's maiden name. Shout out to my son, Hunter. I love you, buddy. Woo! <laughs> best friends, best friends. Anyway. Um, the teacher stops him and she's like, Hunter, Hunter. Hunter! She was like, I just wanted I to say uh, just, goodbye uh, just and say be good. Goodbye. And, good luck. and he's like, what are you talking about? She was like, I, I was just fired. I was fired. He's like, what the fuck? The one teacher who fucking connects with me got fired. And the one friend I have at this entire school slash love interest, the first woman that's ever tried to give me some action, got expelled all in the same day. This school sucks. He was right. This school sucks. Oh, my God. So uh, where are we now?
All of that happened. The FCC is in town, so he can't just do the radio show from his uh, basement in his parents' crib anymore. So what does this kid do? He breaks down his entire fucking uh, radio show unit shit. He breaks it all down. Liberates his mother's Jeep. His mother has one of them, you know, fucking 80s Jeeps. I'm not I'm not a big car guy. But, you know, she gets one of the fucking 80s Jeeps or one of them Jeep Cherokees, a grand. It has no top. It's a Jeep with no top. It's got the bar thing in the middle. You know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. Quit playing with me. So um, he basically liberates his mother's Jeep and he fixes it up to be basically a mobile radio station. I'm like, this fuck y'all. How your fifth, your your father gave you a ham radio. How did you learn to fucking turn this shit into a technological wonder? Ah. What did I know? Anyway, um, I couldn't get my laptop to work properly before we started the pod today. Shout out to Key for letting me utilize her next level heavy duty machine. Anyway, uh, so, um. Why was I? Oh, yeah. He's uh, breaking down. He's taking his mom's Jeep and she's turning into the fucking DeLorean from Back to the Fucking Future. He's fucking putting wires up and he's connecting them and he's got a big ass wire on the top of the Jeep and his fucking, you know, doozits and whatsits and, you know what I'm saying, whatchamacallits and flim flams and jib jabs and they're all just in place and he's got a microphone and it's connected and the fucking tape deck in the car is playing music that's playing in his through his system for his radio show. I was like, how in the fuck did he do this? I want to see that scene. Don't just... Anyway. Anyway. So he sets up his uh, the Jeep and he makes the Jeep uh, useful for um, uh, mobile uh, radio hosting. He pulls up on um, his newly expelled girlfriend, his new new girlfriend, uh, pulls up, walks into her window, because, you know, white privilege. And uh, he starts chopping it up with her, and he's like, you know, hey, uh, I got something to show you. You know, she's like, is it bigger than a baby's arm? I'm like, this is a fucking fucked up movie. So they go to the um, they go to the Jeep. Next thing I know, she he shows her, you know, the super cool ass Jeep. He's like, you ever driven a Jeep before? I've driven a Jeep before, she just right? Fucking, <laughs> and he presses the button, and all you hear is And there's like 300 kids that are all together, kind of on school property with all their cars. They're like, uh, what's it called when people bring all their cars together and party and hang out, barbecue and what is, it's a sport. It's a sport. Uh, the sport people do it. Uh, tailgating. Ha ha. Fuck you. Tailgating. They all tailgating. It's a bunch of teenage kids with their fucking newly given cars, and they're all hanging out, playing. And fucking, he's just riding. Fucking, oh, man, it's, it's such a triumphant scene. It's like, you're never going to hear this fucking radio show again. Because the fucking feds are in town. No teenager has the balls to fucking set their shit up to where they could play Catch Me If You Can with the fucking feds. But for some reason, this kid Mark Hunter can. He's just a, he a bad motherfucker. He's so powerful, somebody fucking died on his watch. He's influencing every child in his community. Sorry, I keep slamming the table. He's influencing every child in his fucking community. He, he's got all the parents and staff at his school in a frenzy. They're starting new rules. They're... Like, they're changing the way life works in their city off this teenage child talking shit. The fucking feds are in town now. The feds are here. This is crazy. This is crazy people shit. The feds are here? He's 16 years old talking shit. 
He talked to a kid that wanted to kill himself. The kid died. He talked to a, a, a gay classmate that fucking got taken advantage of. The feds are here? You know why the feds are there, though? You know why the feds are there, to be perfectly honest? Because that shit start going across state lines. Ah. What do we say in the beginning when we first talk, started talking about this? Kids were fucking recording him on, on cassette tapes. Before there were CDs, there were things called cassettes. Ooh. So they were recording him on cassette tapes. And they were sending them off to other friends. People were playing his tapes on other pirated stations in other cities. They're like, this is going across state lines. This is becoming a federal thing. They say, I'm going to have to bring the FCC in on this. Mr. Watts of the FCC. Like, the feds are here for this teenage boy off of him talking some shit. That is power. That is direction. That is purpose of some sort. Even if he was talking about nothing, giving it this much attention makes it something. He's literally talking about being a teenage kid. The angst and the issues that every human being has to fucking deal with. And he's found a clever, poetic way to fucking do that shit. And it's, causing, it's caused such a stir. The feds have, are, are spending hazard pay dollars for teams of motherfucking men and women to come out searching for this fucking 16-year-old boy. This shit is insane. Anyway, where'd I stop? Uh, uh, Nora started the truck. He fucking hit the switch. Everybody know. Yeah, okay. So fucking he's riding around, and the first song he plays is, is Hello, Dad. Hello, Mom. I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail. Hello, Dad. Hey, Mom. I'm going to jail. And literally, he's in the car going, Hello, Dad. We're going to jail. Like, he knows he's going to be fucked. He knows this is, this is his last broadcast for now. Like, it's so next level. He's riding around. He's like, yeah, kids, you know, so-and-so and such and such. It's 300 fucking kids all fucking jamming to this shit. They got, you know, these are, you know, they wouldn't white privilege. You know, 80s, Arizona. Motherfucking, these kids got pickup trucks with fucking speakers on the top. Like, you know, I mean, it reminds me of fucking, you know, being a young black kid in St. Louis at one point when guys had, like, big speakers in their trunks with amps and you needed an extra battery because... It would suck so much battery from your actual car to get all the bass pumping in it. Ooh. Sometimes you had to get reinforcement on your car, otherwise you could shake your shit loose. Ah. I really went off on a tangent there for a minute. <laughs> anyway, uh, he's got this shit set up. All these kids got all these speakers, and they're all just fucking jamming out like the drive-in. You know what I'm saying? They're all playing it at once, and they're all talking. It's a real tailgating thing. They're hanging out, slapping fives and shit, listening to him talk about you know all the shit he's talking about. And, um, you know, it's, oh, and while all of this is happening, the principal, who's a see you next Tuesday, we talked about that. She's hanging out with Mark, Mark's dad, with Harry's dad. Uh, and the teacher that she fired went and stole some files, gave them to Mark's After dad. The school received the Mark, money from and, the you know, it proves that the principal's been doing illegal shit with, with the school to, to steal money and received. make money and shit. That way we wrapped up that little story. I didn't want you to think I left that story raw dog open and shit. So now that whole story about the corruption of the school system has been shut closed, luckily through somebody who's blood related to Mark. So it just makes it all seem like it's motherfucking making sense. We had to tie that shit up so we can get to the real shit at the end. You understand the fuck I'm saying. Kept the expelled students' names on the rolls. That's illegal. The money went to the school. So, um, yeah, they're, ro they're rolling around. They're playing some jams and shit. You know what I'm saying? They're grooving and dancing and shit in the car, having fun. Next thing you know, dumbasses. I'm like, why'd you let her drive? No offense to her, but it's like, it's your mother's Jeep, stupid. Maybe you should motherfucking, you're used to being alone and shit. Maybe you should find some secluded fucking road, but you know, whatever. Uh, they both in there dancing in the car and shit. And you know who fucking flies right past their motherfucking ass? The goddamn FCC in their yellow motherfucking truck. So what do they do? Two more motherfuckers. So now it's three FCC trucks, motherfucking police fucking trucks, police fucking uh, uh, sedans, 
gunning after their ass. They blasting music and shit. The girls trying to get away and shit. So, you know, it's a it's a Jeep, whatever the fuck. So they getting up the goddamn, uh, they going up a mountainside and shit. Cops can't follow. The FCC vans can't follow and shit. They get off of this little rocky hill for a second. His harmonizer breaks. Oh, geez. My harmonizer. His harmonizer is how he hides his voice and pitches it down. Ah. So he's got, he's sitting there. Jeez, my harmonizer. And he's just. Forget it. Hold on. I gotta get us out of here. He's like, fuck, what do I do? She's like, give me a minute. I think I can fix it. Give me a minute. I think I can fix it. I'm like, damn, all of a sudden, she's goddamn the whiz kid with electronics and shit. I'm like, God damn, what are we gonna do? Shit. And he just pops up. And where she parked, naturally, we're in the third act. You can see a beautiful view from the high school Ooh. with all of these cars that are here. Ooh. All of these kids that showed up just to fucking listen to what this prick has to say. They want to hear his douchey fucking sex jokes and his corny fucking jokes about jacking off and, <laughs> and how it all further goes off into some next level elegant higher higher level thinking and shit that most teenagers are not on. They found something in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? They found something in him. They relate and connect on a way that's so difficult to describe. You know what I mean? Fuck it. I'm going on without no, I, I just fucking I don't know. I just I, I find it I find it really profound on certain levels, then you find it very elementary on another. But like I'm I'm just lost in that in that in that moment. And they're all sitting there listening to the jams that Harry's playing, and, and Harry's looking over at his at his fucking audience, at his true crowd, and he's just like, "Well, damn, fuck it, huh. I'm going on without." No, I think I've got it. Fuck it, no no harmonizer. I'm not, I'm not even gonna worry. He he goes well. This is my real voice. This is the real me. Okay. You know? And he's just talking to him and he's this just really telling him like no more what he's learned in this little time that he's had their attention and he's gotten their love. And he's like, you know, you all care about me just like I care about you and we have to use this power to all love each other and move things forward and make things better. We don't have it perfect. That comes with having but eyes and we having know ears. that shit is fucked up but so we can make a difference as long as we it remember that. It can't get any worse. It can only get better. I, I mean, high school is the very, bottom. Very Being a compelling. teenager sucks, you know? but that's the point. Surviving it is the whole point. Quitting is not going to be And then immediately the strong. fucking feds come back with a goddamn helicopter. And you're like, what the fuck? He's 16! And so, you know, they pursue with chase. And fucking, they're, you know, they're driving. And now he's like... Hanging all he's standing on top of the Jeep and shit, and he's like, Hey, you know, live your life. All of you guys, you start a radio station, and you start a radio station, and you He's like, use your voice, come up with a nickname, do what I did. Anybody can do it. Literally, everybody's looking and they're like, it's so much pandemonium. They're like, oh my god, it's the real him. The fact that his voice is different than what they're accustomed to has got them like. Wait, wait, wait. It's like a magic trick in front of your eyes. They couldn't even understand. It's like, it's like when the, the uh, what's the best way? It's like when Columbus first came to America, ah. right? Certain motherfuckers couldn't really, they were like, what the fuck? What is that? You know what I mean? They never, they've never seen guys that look like that. So they're like, what are you? If you don't, if your brain can't register what the fuck it's seeing, then it might not see it. Ah. That's the reason a lot of people say aliens are real. I'm getting completely off subject. Okay, back to what I was talking about. So he's fucking pulling up and he's like, hey, everybody, you know, start a radio station and fucking fight and, you know, tell the truth. Talk to each other. You know, give power, give power. Keep freedom of speech alive. And they fucking, you know, disconnect this shit. And, uh, you know, then the feds snatch him and his girl. They snatch Nora and Mark. Well, it's fucking Harry. He's not Mark anymore. He's Harry. He can, like, talk and shit. You know what I mean? Like, Mark is gone. He's just Harry. And feds snatch both of them, which look like fucking cops, dude. It's just, like, local fucking cops. But they snatch their ass, and while they walking off, all you see is, you know, different characters. They made you 
give a shit about during the fucking movie. You know, the teacher that reached him, she's like, that's the guy who I've been listening to. Wow, so that's really Mark's personality. The, the pretty girl, the valedictorian who blew her fucking face off, fucking, you know, trying to prove a point and shit. She's looking at him. You know, it, it's, it, it was interesting. All that to say, he walks up and he walks in to the fucking paddy wagon. He looks back while everybody's cheering and saluting him and he goes, Talk hard. Talk hard. And then, and then at the end of the movie, you, you just hear, you hear a thousand kids starting their own radio shows all across the fucking world and shit. It was a beautiful message. I thought it was. I just think it's, I think it's a pretty badass movie. I thought it was super profound. It fucking hit me like a ton of bricks. I just, I think it's very deep. And that was the reason I wanted to talk about it for my first episode of my podcast, because to me, that feels like the first podcast ever. Very poetic. Anyway, kids, I've taken up enough of your time. I've been rambling, talking about a bunch of shit. Well, I've been talking about Pump Up the Volume, because um, that was the year for today on... What year is it with Rockwell Knuckles? I want to thank you for hanging out with me. I want to thank you for um, chilling and being good. I want to thank you for allowing me to ramble for as long as I've been rambling, not knowing that I'm buzzing off a fucking chocolate mushroom. So, sorry if I got a little wordy and passionate. Uh, yeah, I want to thank uh, Key. I want to thank Kyle. I want to thank my brother, Monk. I want to thank Aloha, just because... Uh, and you've been listening to What Year Is It? with Rockwell Knuckles on Loco. So, bye guys. Bye, bye, bye. Talk hard. <laughs>